Praise Jesus. I would like to take this time to preach on, I, on something I believe that is very important today. And uh, I will tell you something. If I'll reveal something to you. I always preach what I think is important. <laughs> and so I hope that's what every preacher does. At least we as preachers think it's important. That's why we're preaching it. Because if we didn't think it's important, then, you know, that's already not a good sign. Uh, I, want, <clears throat> I want us to um, get a lesson from history today. And I want to ask every person to pay as much attention as you can because sometimes history can get boring. I don't know. But I believe that we can get something very special, very important out of this history lesson. This is biblical history lesson. And so every biblical history is not just history, but it's a lesson for each and one of us. Every biblical history is inspiration for each and one of us. It is, it is what God placed in this Bible because there's a lot of history that happened at the time of David. And today we're going to be talking about David. There's a lot of things that happened at the time of David. But a lot of those things are not written in this Bible. But the things that are written are the things that are very beneficial for you and I. And so I want us to look at this history about David who was... David's kind of like sole purpose was to defeat the Philistines. He became a legend by defeating a giant that was a Philistine. You know, David is popular in Christianity. He was popular in Christianity. But David is popular in the whole world specifically because he defeated a Philistine. He became a legend by defeating a Philistine. So that was his whole kind of like destiny in life. So I want to go to a specific episode or a specific scene in the life of David. And then we're going to go cha 10 chapters back and, and quickly but slowly, quickly get to this 30th chapter and see how things got there. How did it get to the point that we're going to read right now. So let's, if we could put it up on the screen and kind of have everybody follow. This is 1 Samuel chapter 30. If we could get 1 Samuel chapter 30, we're going to be reading verses 1 and till about 8 or 9 verses right about that. So as uh, soon as we have that on the screen, we're going to read and I want everybody if possible to read and follow. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the woman and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went on their way. That's a very important line there. Next one. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burnt with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until, had, until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoma and Jezreelite, the Jezreelites and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And this is the important war, uh, verse. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring me the ephod here to me. And Abiatar brought the effort to David. Next verse. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Should I pursue these troops? Should I overtake them? And he answered to him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Can we go to the verse before this one more time, please? Let's read this together out loud. Then David said to Abiatar the priest, Ahimelech's son, Tongue twister today. Please bring me the ephod here to me. And Abiatar brought the ephod to David. <clears throat> you see the picture, right? Sad story. David and his men, they were out and about. They come back to their camp where they were living, where their wives were, where their children was. They come to the camp. 
And guess what they find? They find the place burnt down. The kids are taken. Sons and daughters are taken. Wives are taken. Everything is gone. All everything, all their belongings, everything is taken. And, 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 and the situation is so sad here that you could see that the Bible really describes how sad that is by saying they wept so long until they could not weep no more. They couldn't weep no more. That's how bad the situation was. And so this is, this is where David is. But the question is, how did David end up there? If we can put a slide, there's one slide. I want to preach today about, there's one slide on there. If we could put the slide up. I want to preach about ephod. We read this word in the verse that we read all together. Did we? Yes, yes we did. Now, it is a plate that is hanged on the priest's chest breastplate is what it's kind of called and this is was means of communicating with God it was it was commanded through Moses and so that's how priests would if the priest would go to ask something of God if they went to acquire something from God receive something from God this was like a means of communication that's why David asked for the ephod to be brought to him and so that he, and then, and then it says, and then he inquired of the Lord and started asking all this. So I want to, th this is kind of what I want to talk about. And then, then obviously transition that to, to how that applies to us. This begins somewhere much earlier, this ephod. It, this was in David's camp with him. But let's go to chapter, I'm not going to read. I'm just going to go through all of this. And again, I ask you guys that you um, pay attention to the history as we go in chapter 20. This is the history. In chapter 20, David learns, and, and for some of you, I'm going to be kind of refreshing your memory of what you already know. Some of you may learn something new today from David's story. I don't know. But in chapter 20, David discovers that King Saul wants to kill him. King Saul was the same King Saul that was afraid to fight the giant that was bailed out by David because David came and killed the giant for him. And you know the story where everybody was singing and praising uh, David that Saul killed thousands and David killed tens of thousands. And so King David wanted to kill, King, King Saul wanted to kill David. In chapter 20, David finds out that King wants to kill him. So he starts running from the King. Does everybody know that David was running from the King for quite some time? Okay. All right. So in chapter 21... I'm going to just read this verse. It says, David, as he's running, verse 1 says, David went to Nob, the Ahimelech, the priest of, the Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech trembled when he met him and asked, why are you here alone? Do you recall this name, Ahimelech? Did we already read it? Is that who David asked to bring the ephod to him? His son, yes. So he brought, he asked Abinatar, the son of Ahimelech. But here we're, we're reading 10 chapters before, we're reading of the father of the son who brought David this ephod, okay? This, all of these details may be complicated, but this is very important to what I want to preach today. So please try to follow me. So the father of Abinatar who gave David this ephod in order so David could ask of the Lord what to do, he is here 10 chapters before. David comes to this priest and because David was running from, from, from Saul, he came to the priest because he wanted to ask of the Lord. And regular person did not have the ephod. Only the priest had the ephod. And Ahimelech was the priest. So he comes to this priest and he asks, you know, he spends some time there. He eats some bread there. He eventually ends up getting the sword with which he killed, you know, the, the giant Goliath that, that he gave to, I guess, to the priest or it was given to the priest. But here we see that this is where, where David comes and, and speaks to this Ahimelech. After David leaves Ahimelech, so he continues you running. I'm going to try to, you know, just, just go through the story. After David uh, leaves, we see this in chapter 22, that Saul, who is chasing David, who was the king, and so 
the king was the main guy and Ahimelech was supposed to answer to the king Saul and when king finds out now one more thing to notice when David uh, when in, in first in, in this here, here's what we read David is why did he come to Ahimelech because he was running from Saul right right but in verse let's read this verse again David went to Nob to Ahimelech the priest when this priest saw David what was priest doing it says he was trembled when he saw David and he asked why are you alone why are you without your king Saul why are you alone and that moment is when David he lied to the priest he told the priest I am on a special mission I was sent by King Saul on a special mission and no one's about to know about this so this king he accepts David he prays with David he gives bread to David in honor of the king and at the end of the day this lie that David told cost this priest his life we go to chapter 22 and Saul comes to Ahimelech and he starts accusing Ahimelech why did you gave assistance to David David is my enemy so he reveals that David is my enemy David is running away from me why are you assisting him and Ahimelech he swears he says I had no idea I didn't know he's your enemy I wouldn't have assisted him if I knew he's your enemy I thought he was with you and so this lie that David said cost this man his life and so in chapter 22 uh, we read the story that uh, that in chapter 22 verse 16, 16 the king says but the king said you will surely die Ahimelech you and your whole family then the king ordered the guards at his side to turn and kill all the priests but because these uh, because these priests you know the guards didn't want to he asked a specific guy who was not even an Israelite to kill Ahimelech and that day not only this priest the main priest died 85 priests died that day because David lied they were innocent men they died now why am I telling you all this let's continue and then we're going to put it put it all together when this slaughter was happening and uh, this priests were getting killed in verse 23 or in chapter 23 we says that now Abiatar son of Ahimelech or sorry uh, this is still in chapter 22 but one of the sons of Ahimelech named Abinatar escaped and flew to join David so all these confusing verses but I'm going to try to talk more rather than read more kind of so we can understand <clears throat> this one son of this priest escapes and doesn't get killed the whole household gets killed everybody all the 85 priests get killed because of what David like but one escapes and runs away to David and as he runs to David he takes this effort with him and this is what I was going to read in, in verse 23. Now Abinatar, son of Ahimelech, had brought the ephod down with him when he fled to David. So this is how David ended up with this equipment or whatever you may call it. It's a means of communication with God. The whole house gets slaughtered. One son escapes and goes to David. And so now... David doesn't have to find a priest in order to acquire of the Lord he has the means of communication by his side and so as you see as you see this whole as you continue to reading the whole um, run of David from Saul David was always a step ahead from Saul because of Ephod because of this means of communication we see so there is there's this story where David finds out that Philistines attacked Kyla it's a town or a city or a town of Kyla and David asks he has the effort with him so he asks of the Lord should I go and deliver this city 
And God answers. He has a means of communication. God is communicating with David. God is talking to David. When David first was running from King, uh, from King Saul, he couldn't just ask of God because he didn't have effort. He had to go to Amichelek and, uh, you know, for him to ask. But now he has effort. He is asking, should I go? And God answers, yes, go. So he goes and frees the city of Kaila. This is all these historic details, but they're all going to have a meaning. So he goes and, uh, and frees the city of Kaila, which is kind of like cornered in. And then the next moment, Saul finds out that David is in Kaila. And so Saul is planning to attack and surrender the surround this city and 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 kill David which is his 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 goal right he wants to kill David what does David do he asks the Lord he has effort he asks the Lord is Saul really coming for me and the Lord answers yes so now David knows this intelligence this the CIA kind of thing he he receives information that Saul has to send his spies to receive information. David inquires of the Lord because he has ephod. He inquires of the Lord. Is Saul coming here? Should I be worried? And God answers, yes, he is. And listen, he asks of this specific detail. He says, will people of Kila give me up and my man to Saul when Saul comes here? And God answers, yes, they will. These same people, these same people that David just rescued from Philistines were willing to give him up to Saul. Now, without Ephod, David may have not known that. David may have thought, there's no way these people would give me up to Saul. I just saved these people. Human thinking, right? Normal human logical thinking. I just saved these people from philistines they they are on my side they would not give me up and if david was just going by his regular logical thinking and had remained in kyla saul would have came surrounded him saul had more men saul would have killed david but look david asked because he had ephod he asked of the lord is saul really coming here god answers yes are these people gonna give me up to him the gods the god answers yes and so david escapes Kyla and Saul shows up and David nowhere to be found. He is always a step ahead. He is always a step ahead. And even Saul speaks about this. And for example, in chapter 23, verse 22, Saul tells his people and he says, go and get more information. Find out where David usually goes and who has seen him there. They tell me he is very crafty. Saul can't find David anywhere. People tell him he's crafty. He always knows where to go. He just knows exactly when to escape. He just knows exactly where to go. How is he so crafty? How is he so clever? How is he so smart? He's not. He just has effort. He has means of communication with the Lord. Is somebody starting to kind of catch on where I'm heading? Praise the Lord. <laughs> It's not that David is so smart. It's not that he's so crafty. It's not that, he, not that he is such an intelligent commander that he knows how to move his 600 men around without getting caught by King Saul. It's that he has a means of communication with God. He has effort with him. He has effort with him. And God always reveals to him the next step, and he's always a step ahead of David, of Saul, and Saul can't do nothing to David. Wouldn't it be nice in life? Because often we just don't know what decisions to make. Often we don't know what job to take, what to do about marriage this year, next year, this girl, that girl. <laughs> Sometimes we don't know what career to choose. Sometimes we don't know the decisions we need to make. Wouldn't it be nice if we had some kind of means of communication with God that we could just ask him and he would give us like a step in advance? Wouldn't it be nice to have something that David had, right? David had ephod. 
And it was nice. He was able to be a step ahead. It would be nice if you and I could be a step ahead in life if we could have a means of communication, right? We're going to continue. <laughs> We're going to continue in the story. <clears throat> because David is always a step ahead, he had two chances to kill Saul. You guys know that, right? He shows up to David once, I mean to Saul once. He cuts off a piece of his garment while he was, you know, uh, while he was uh, not paying attention, unavailable. He cuts off his piece of garment. And then later he shows it to Saul and he says, look, I could have killed you. But I didn't. He shows, you know, you know how David respected Saul and he said, I will not lay my hand on the anointed one. Then he has another chance where he steals his spear and he could have just killed him there, but he doesn't. And so the way the story continues is, right, David, this, this is the history we know so far, right? Let's kind of repeat before we continue. King Saul wants to kill David. David runs to Ahimelech. To ask of the Lord, because Ahimelech has the ephod, the means of communication. But he lies to, to, to Ahimelech, to the priest. Because of that lie, the priest dies. One of the son of the priest escapes, comes, joins David. J David now has the means of communication. And now every move David makes, he asks of God. And God tells him. And because of that, he is a step ahead of Saul. That is why he has these two chances to kill Saul. And he doesn't. And so Saul is just doesn't know what else to do. He's like, this guy's crafty. Give me as much information as you can about him. And so we see in chapter 20, in chapter um, 24 or 23, 24, we see the story that David is talking to Saul. And he is telling Saul, look, I had all these chances to kill you. And I didn't kill you. I had all these chances to kill you, but I saved your life. I didn't kill you. This is in chapter 26. So let's, let's, let's stop chasing me. Let's have peace. Stop chasing me. And so this is what Saul says. Then in verse 21 of chapter 26. Then Saul said to David, I have sinned. Come back, David, my son. Because you considered my life precious today, I will not try to harm you again. Surely I have acted like a fool and have been terribly wrong. So here we see that Saul admits that he's been wrong, admits that he's been fool, admits that he just can't win this fight. He has more men, he has more authority, he has more weapon. But he can't win this man. He sees that this man is more crafty. And this man is actually a good man. Like, I'm bad. I'm chasing him. And he's a good man. He had a chance to kill me. If I had a chance to kill him, I would have killed him. He had a chance to kill me twice, and he didn't kill me. And so they make this peace. And chapter 26 ends with these words. Then Saul said to David, may you be blessed, David, my son. You will do great things, surely, and triumph. So David went his way and Saul went his way. So this Cold War or whatever you want to say, it has come to an end. <clears throat> because of Ephod, David is a step ahead of Saul. Saul cannot win this war. He sees that David is good. He sees that David is crafty ahead of him. They are starting to make peace. And so finally, and this is the dangerous moment that came to the life of David. This is a dangerous moment that I want to highlight that comes to the lives of many people. There is no more trouble. And when there is no more trouble, there is no more need to ask of God. Is that true often with us? How many of you know when it's Trivoha, we go to Boha? <laughs> yeah. It's a Ukrainian saying, when it's difficulties, when it's danger, we go to God. It just rhymes in Ukrainian. <laughs> and so David had this moment. It was dangerous. It was difficult. He was going to God. He was going to God. Now, Saul promises not to chase him anymore. Saul says, let's live in peace. I'm not going to chase you anymore. And so David... Having the means of communication, 
stops using the means of communication. Why am I saying this? Because that's exactly what, how chapter 27 begins. Chapter 26 ends with David and Saul making peace, going about their way. And here's how chapter 27 starts. But David asked Amihelech or, or Abinadar to bring him the ephod. That's not what he said. It says, but David taught to himself. Having the means of communication with God, he instead taught to himself. One of these days, I will be destroyed by Saul. The best thing I can do is escape to the land of the Philistines. Then Saul will give up searching for me anywhere in Israel and I will ship out in this land. Why is this the best thing you can do, David? David, is, he thought to himself and he's making a plan to go anywhere, but in this case, a terrible decision, to the Philistines. Why do you think it's the best? Did this whole time you were winning because you were such a good thinker? No. This whole time you were winning because you were asking of God. You have the ephod. And now David is not asking of God. David is thinking to himself, I am going to go to the Philistines. Who is Philistines? Who is Philistines? What nationality was Goliath? Besides the preachers, who can tell me? What nationality was Goliath? A Philistine. The enemy of the nation of Israel for which basically David was appointed as a king to deliver the nation of Israel from Philistines. David, having the means of communication with God, chooses not to use the means of communication with God but thinks to himself all of a sudden he's a brilliant thinker and he thinks to himself I'm gonna get you somewhere hang hang tight I'm taking you somewhere he starts thinking that you know what I'm gonna go to this land and so David makes this terrible decision because he didn't ask of God he makes this terrible decision by going to the land of Philistines. That's, that's just crazy to me that he chooses to go there. And he even calls this the best thing I can do. Like how bad were the other options? That this is the best you can do. Like how bad were the other options that going to your enemy is the best thing you can do? Had David asked to Ephod to be brought to him? Had he inquired of the Lord? I'm pretty sure the Lord would not tell him to go to Philistines. But David, instead of asking of God, having the means of communication, I have a feeling this reminds me of somebody. I have a feeling this reminds me of somebody having means of communication and not using them. It's the person I always see in the reflection of my mirror. That's that guy. He's so often having the means of communication with God. Just too often thinks to himself and says, I'm going to do it this way and this way. Do you know anybody like that? Who often having the means of communication but chooses not to use the means of communication. But starts thinking to themselves, I'm going to do this and that and that. And ends up regretting doing this and that. I know a guy like that. I'm sure you do too. And so this is what happens to David. He goes to Philistines. He stays there. But that's not the end. Once you make one wrong decision, there's another one to follow. There is another one to follow. Because the Philistines are who? The enemies of the Israelites. So sooner or later, what are the Philistines going to do? They're going to go attack the, Isra the people of Israel. And so that's exactly what happens. We continue. In chapter 29, this is exactly one chapter before chapter 30 where we read this disastrous story of everybody being gone in the life of David. Chapter 29 says, the Philistines 
gathered all their forces at Aphek, and Israel camped by the spring of Jezreel, and the Philistine rulers marched with their units of hundreds and thousands, and David and his men was marching at the rear with them. What was David doing? Did anybody pay attention to what we just read? What is David doing? The Philistines, the enemy of Israelites, are going to attack the nation of Israel. And David is marching with them on Israel. Maybe I read something wrong, but that's what it says. Having the means of communication with God. Having effort. He chose not to use effort. But thought to himself, I'm going to go and be with Philistines. Just so Saul doesn't find me. Staying there for some time. Ends up going with the Philistines. Marching against Israel. Did he ask, did he ask the, the ephod to be brought so he can ask, should I march against Israel? He didn't because I'm pretty sure if he would have, God would have told him, you do not march against Israel. Because I appointed you as a king to save the Israel, not to march against Israel. It's a sad story. And so time passes by. David has ephod and he's not using it. This is going to be something I really want to bring our attention to. Having the ephod, but not using it. David has ephod. He was using it. That's why he was crafty. That's why he was a step ahead of Saul. And now comes time. David is not using the ephod. He's not communicating with God. And he's making one terrible decision after another. Now, by God's mercy, he is not allowed to go march against Israel. And that's when he returns. And so the chapter 30 begins that David, he was not allowed by other rulers of Philistine's army. He was not allowed to march against Israel. And when he was told, David, you cannot go with us against Israel because you are an Israelite. David returns to his camp with his men only to find, only to find his camp being robbed. His people taken away, all as a result because he did not use the means of communication with God. I'm going to be leading us to prayer, concluding. And so here in chapter 30, we see that David asks finally for ephod. After not asking once, after not asking the second time, after not asking, after getting a problem into a problem because of not, he finally, and we read this in chapter 30, we read this together. Then David said to Abiatar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. And Abiatar brought him the ephod. And finally, David asked of God, God, what should I do? Do I run after these people? Do I not run after these people? Am I going to catch him? And when you have ephod, you ask and God answers. You ask and God answers. And that is, and David could have been doing this the whole time and he wasn't. And so he asked God and God says, yes, go. You will catch them. You will find them. And you will get back everything. And David goes and gets everything back. And this ends good. Why? Because he finally realized once again, I have a means of communication. I need to use it. And because I wasn't using it, I've ended up in this sad situation that I've ended up in. Has anybody got an idea where we're heading? Having means of communication with God and not using it is going to bring you to where David was. <clears throat> David communicated, 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 step ahead, 
step ahead, step ahead, stops communicating, loses, loses, loses. Then starts communicating again, wins again. You and I, my friends, we have the greatest means of communication. You and I, my friends, we have the Holy Spirit comforter. We have the Holy Spirit comforter. Now, the priest Ahimelech died because of David's transgression, because of David's lies. And that is how David ended up with the means of communication. That is how he ended up with Ephod. Our priest, the high priest Jesus Christ, died because of mine and yours transgression. And as a result of that, we ended up with the means of communication, the Holy Spirit, comforter. We ended up with the means of communication, the Holy Spirit, comforter, with whom we have a fellowship with, with whom we have a relationship with, with whom we can ask and say, God, should I go? Should I do this? Do I make this decision? And do I make this decision? Is this the right career for me? It may sound good. It may sound to me like this is the best thing I can do. David thought to himself that this is the best thing I can do. What decisions do we make? The worst things we can do? No. We make the things we think is the best thing we can do. But David, a king of Israel, I would say he was smarter than I am. I would say David was smarter than a number of people in this place. I don't want to say everybody, but I think he was smarter than a number of people here. And David still in his mind, the best decision he could do was clearly the most foolish decision he can do. So if David's best decision was a full decision, is it possible that my best decision is also a full decision? Is it possible the decision you think is the best decision you can make is also a foolish decision? That's very possible. And so the question is, often we do it and why do we continue making our own decisions that we think are the best for us when we have effort when we have holy spirit comforter when we have holy spirit with whom we can communicate that gives us access through to the throne of grace that we can speak that we can say God I have a decision to make I need to buy a car this one is a 2000 BMW my mom does not like it should I buy it or not it looks like the best decision for me but should I do it there's a guy that likes me he vapes, he smokes, he drinks, but he's cute. Should I marry him? Should I date him? To me, it seems like it's the best decision I can make. How many people do that? Oh, there's this girl. <laughs> I mean, she's nice to everybody. She's generous to everybody, but she's cute. Should I marry her? It seems like the best decision I can make. We have Ephod. We have the means of communication with the Holy Spirit. We have Holy Spirit that we can come to the throne of God. We do not have to think what's the best thing I can do. Careers. Oh, we want to make careers and it seems like this is the best thing I can do because the digits here there's six of them it's a six digit salary six figure salary the figures are good here is that that's the best thing I can do it seems like it's the best decision now down the road that decision is gonna it may lead me to depression and drug addiction because I have a lot of money but no God in it but right now it seems like it's the best decision I can do but you know we can be a step ahead David was a step ahead, right? Why was David a step ahead? Because he thought to himself a lot. Tell me I'm wrong. 
No, it's not because he taught to himself a lot. It's because he inquired of the Lord. And when he taught to himself a lot, that's when he made wrong decisions. Church, I want to ask you. I want to ask you of something. We have the means of communication with God. Let's use it. Let's use it. We don't have to suffer. We don't have to come to a place like David was. M most people here are young. <laughs> yes. A lot of you are in your 20s. I once was there. A lot of you are in your 20s. <clears throat> you know what's sad? I have I have people we went I went to high school with. I know people I went to high school with or hung out in my high school years. And we were all good friends and some of these people are in a place where they can weep no longer. They have no more strength to weep. That's where their life has gotten them to. Some are not alive anymore. Some are addicted and can't get out of terrible addictions. Ten years ago, they were making decisions that they, they thought to themselves was the best thing they can do. And they knew about God, they knew about the Holy Spirit, but yet they thought to themselves, this is the best thing I can do. And today as a result, they are where David and his men were, sitting in Ziglag. City is burnt down. Everything is taken. Families are taken. You know, we were all dreaming we're going to have nice families and I'm thankful to God for my beautiful family. I have many friends who have beautiful families, but I know some whose families have fallen apart. And just like David, their wives were taken away. These guys, their wives are taken away as well because they made decisions they thought was best to themselves and they didn't ask of God. Having the means of communication, they didn't ask of God. I don't know what stage you are in. I don't know if there's anybody in this place right now who's already in Ziklag. I don't know if there's anybody in this place who's already there sitting and you can't cry no more. That's how bad your life is. You're weeping over your life. You're regretting the decisions of your life and you just can't regret no more. Like how much more can I regret what I have done? I am in terrible situation. You, my friend, have means of communication. You have access to the means of communication. Maybe you are in the camp of Philistines you already made some bad decisions but your family is still with you but your things are still some kind of things you still have you can turn around from there you have access to the means of communication maybe you already started hanging out with the bad crew they haven't they haven't dragged you into the bad things they're doing but you're already hanging out with them and you think it's the best thing you can do you have the means of communication with God to ask God, is this the best thing I can do, God? Is this the best thing I can do? Or maybe you're still in the right place, but you're already thinking to yourself, maybe I should go this way. Don't do it. You have the means of communication with God. Ask God. Inquire of God. Ephod. Remember this word, Ephod means of communication with God Holy Spirit power of the Holy Spirit a relationship with God we have access to relationship with God to relationship with the Holy Spirit we have access we can ask God we can ask God and avoid being in the place where you have to weep so much where you cannot weep no more because that's how bad your situation is stand to your feet with me please as we go to prayer i am gonna make an altar call i have to make an altar call because 
God wants to change some situations today. God changed the situation of David. David's sitting there weeping and he can't weep no more because families are gone and everybody's mad at him. All his men are mad at him and David is sitting there but David remembered. David remembered that he still has ephod. Everything may be gone but if the ephod is here everything could be back. You may have everything, but if you don't have ephod, I don't know what's going to happen. But everything is gone, but ephod is here. Something good can happen. So David asks, bring me ephod. Abinadar, bring me ephod. I want to ask of the Lord, what should I do? And ephod is being brought to David. And there's David starts inquiring of the Lord, God, do I go? Am I going to catch them? Am I going to get back everything that's been taken from me? And God was pleased with David, finally asking of him. And he says, go and you will get it back. It is not too late for you today to come to the altar and say, God, what do I do? Can I turn around out of this? I have already gotten myself to this relationship. I have committed myself to this relationship. Can I still get out of it? I have already gotten myself into this friendship, into this circle of friends. Can I still get out of this? I already signed up for this career. Can I still get out of it? I have signed up to this addiction. Can I still get out of it? I'm so addicted already. I can't even get out of it on my own. Do I have a way in you? God says, ask for effort. Ask for the means of communication with God. Talk to God. Talk to Him. Have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And God, and God wants to answer you. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you asking of Him. God's been waiting. He's been waiting. He's been watching you as you were making one wrong decision after another. One wrong after another. And He's waiting for you to make the right one. And that is ask of Him. I want to ask the worship group to come up. We're going to sing this wonderful song that we sang at the beginning. Consume me with your fire. And if you, if you have made a decision in your life that you are starting to think was wrong and you are regretting of it, I don't know how deep into that decision you are. I don't know if you're already in zigzag and you lost a lot of things. Are you still in the camp of Philistines? Or are you just at the beginning of that decision? And if you don't know how to get out of it, come to the altar. Come to the altar. And just bow on your knees. And tell God, consume me with your fire just sing these songs at the altar we have pastors they're gonna come lay their hands on you they're gonna pray with you restore your relationship with God restore David had this almost you could say relationship with Ephod he always asked for it and then he lost it and then Ziglag he restored it again you can restore it you can start asking of God once again you can start praying once again and God wants to answer you and God wants to return the things that have been lost he wants to return the things that have been lost we're gonna pray everybody with your eyes closed please with your eyes closed we're gonna pray and if you need this prayer please come to the altar if you need this prayer please come to the altar Heavenly Father we thank you Jesus, we praise you in this place, God. We praise you in this place, God.